Hello there, welcome into this video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up your iRacing cockpit camera. I'm going to give you an understanding of what each setting does, show you how to dial it into your needs, and make it very easy for you to switch between cars with uh, little to no hassle. So first things first, let's get into the cockpit camera. If you've not used the iRacing replay controls before, it's down here at the bottom. We see the lap, uh, all the media controls, and then TV1. If we hit the up arrow, we can get to cockpit camera. Um, I always give it a pause. Um, if you've been doing any laps, you don't want the car moving. Um, so we can see I reset everything from default. Uh, we're in the Mercedes GT3, but I tried to put everything back to how it would be if I've just set up my FOV and uh, dialed in my screens. So we can see I feel my wheel is too far away because obviously I have this wheel. And then the wheel not only is bigger, it's too far. Everything's too far away from me. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Also, the alignments don't look right. So the best thing to do is to jump into the car. Switch over the black box. And once we get to graphics adjustment, the first two settings I always like to change, first of all, shift horizon and driver height. Shift horizon is an easy one. If we start changing it, we see a red line appears. This red line should line up with your where your eye falls on your screen vertically. So if you get comfortable in your seating position, how you would normally drive, change this. Um, it's best to probably just touch the screen, hold the screen where, you're, where you think your eye falls vertically, and then change this number to line it up. I set up my screens to be zero. So what does that mean? It means my eye lands dead middle of my screens vertically. Uh, when I was designing my rig, I just made it that way. But yours may vary. It can, be, it can be in the minus direction. It can be in the positive direction. Really, it's just a case of where that red line falls vertically. The other metric is driver height. Now, we'll come back to that because this one is more a better understanding of once you set up a couple of cars, it helps you dial things in. I'll explain if we jump into the replay mode. So if we come back out, get out the car, we're in replay mode. As you can see, we can change the camera, stay in cockpit camera and press control F12. We bring up the camera editing tool. Now you um, may think this is just for customizing replays, but we can actually use this to dial in your cockpit camera without affecting your FOV. That's the key. Um, first things first, the X, the offset X, lets you control how close you are to the car. So I definitely want to be closer in this car. I'm going to say around there. That looks good. Hit space bar so you can get a feel for what distance you're at. So I'm feeling like my wheel is where it would be. I am feeling, however, a little low. Now, this is where we can use the offset Z to change our height. But what I am, what this is why I mentioned about your driver height. This is something, if you find you're always changing this in one direction in every car you jump into, this is where driver height comes in. So if we jump into the car and we change our driver height. So I usually set my driver height around three centimeters. This is just what works for me. So I find I only need to in, if we jump out the car, I, I find control F12. I hardly need to change this. Now I do in some cars need to go up or down with it here. Um, but I find three centimeters just suits me the best. Um, feels correct for me. A few other things. Um, this is a personal preference. There is no, uh, no best choice here. If you go options, graphics, we have the choice of um, how we want to show. Do we want to show the driver arms and the steering wheel rotating? So I'll give you an example of that. So as you can see, we see both the steering wheel and the driver hands. We can change it to just steering wheel. Uh, so just show the steering wheel, and this would animate without the arms. So this is quite a popular popular choice. And then I'll just run through the options for examples. So imagine you can uh, imagine what they are now. Um, show only if it has a display. So that's the same as this option, but um, if... So, for example, what the Merc doesn't have a display. So, we jump into the car. As you can see, there's no steering wheel. Um, if it had a display, it would show it. But as you can imagine, we have the display here. So, we don't need to see it. Um, then we have show static steering wheel. So, this will always show the steering wheel, but it just won't move. Perhaps from this angle, you won't be able to see it if I zoom out. There you go. We can see the steering wheel will always be there. It just won't move. Let's put that back. 
And there's then the option I pick, usually, hide steering wheel. Oh, it depends what kind of mood I'm in, actually. Uh, let's go with static for now. In replay, I quite like to show the driver's arms. So when we're watching, we can, yeah, it looks uh, good for photos, etc. But uh, you've got them two options there. Now, one thing not to forget, when you're in this camera mode, in the cockpit camera, we do want to save this. It saves per car. So if we come down here to the bottom right, we hit save car. We give this a name. Um, call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. You call it new. It doesn't matter. This is saved per car. It's a per car folder. And it will re always reload the last one you saved. If we save that as new, and if we ever, was ever to jump out the car, it would remember it. If you ever are unhappy with your settings and you want to load them to default without resetting back to zero, just hit load car and the default option will be there. If we click that, you'll, you'll see we're a little bit further back. But obviously, it has maintained our shift horizon and driver height here in the black box. So, yeah, a quick run through again. Shift horizon should be set to where your eye lands on the screen vertically. Driver height, again, it's the same as offset Z on the control F12. It's the exact same as this option here. Oh, let's load our new settings. It's the exact same. does no different. The only thing is if you're always changing it up or down for every car you're getting in, then messing with the driver height can definitely help. And the offset X, this is definitely the most popular one to change. Uh, let's you get closer and further away. Now. So you don't worry, it does not affect your field of view. Um, it's hard to see because you can't see triples. But if you see here, the trees in the distance, if we move forward and back, we can see our perspective to the trees don't change. I.e. what is moving physically is the seat and our position, not the warping of the outside field of view. So you don't have to worry about um, anything like that. So if we set ours around there, that looks pretty good for me. So yeah, I think that's everything. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button. If you want to see all the rest of my videos, subscribe. Bell notification to know when the next video drops. Other than that, if you want to see me racing, I'm always racing about five times a week over on Twitch. Um, but yeah, thank you again for the support. Catch you in the next one.